Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, my industry, the uh, I'm, a, I'm in the mental health profession here in the U.S. I'm a psychologist, and I spend a good part of that article uh, confronting what my business, my, which is not, not so much a profession, a business these days, and what they've done to contribute. And I think they've, they've contributed to the abuse syndrome in many ways. They've taken a lot of our most potentially uh, rebellious and noncompliant uh, young people out there and labeled them with all kinds of diseases, the most obvious being something called oppositional defiant disorder which is an increasingly popular diagnosis here in the United States for kids who just argue with adults, who refuse to comply with adults, who are stubborn. How and odd. So what, yeah, I mean, I'm not being facetious here. I'm not joking about that. That's, that's going on. And they're increasingly subject to Medicaid drugs and uh, behavior modifications. But there's even a larger group of, I think, folks who are being described as mentally ill who are engaged in what I would call more of a passive rebellion. So there's millions of kids out there who are bored in boring schools who just don't pay attention because it's not interesting for them. They're not getting anything out of it. And so they're being labeled with attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. And so you got millions more who are just depressed, completely depressed, because their lives are completely alienating. They hate what they're doing for a living. They're working on jobs only to hold on to health insurance. Um, their lives are miserable. And so, you know, they're medicalized with a mental illness. Okay. And that's the first part of the clip. The second part's up on MaxKaiser.com. Max, my issue is I'm going after, as the doctor, I hadn't even seen the clip. I just wanted to play it. As he said that everybody isn't under this. I'm after the people who didn't know or who were slowly brought into denial, who never really paid attention to the world, that kind of just accept what's put in front of them. I'm trying to wake them up or get them to see what's happening. And all we talk about here is solutions and ideas and ways to counter this. But I do get your point of just exposing it and then people just laying there and taking it. For, for a certain percentage of the public, it will make it worse for them. They, you know, they're not given a silver bullet, some, some easy one-inch punch, because I don't believe that exists. And so they just get deeper in uh, to submitting to their pimp. And when he talks about giving them flowers, that's like John Gotti, the Teflon Don, a couple times a year would buy pizzas for the whole neighborhood, fireworks displays. Uh, he would pay for a funeral for somebody. Just like the government puts all these billboards up and TV ads and radio ads of how they're helping us and they're our daddy and they're the authority and they're going to keep us safe. That is the carrot of the stick. Max Kaiser. Well, uh, the doctor is saying that at some point in the cycle, the truth, the truth, the people recognize what is as the truth is making them feel even sicker. And uh, So we don't tell them the truth? Excuse me? So we don't tell people what's happening? Well, uh, that, that's the paradox. And um, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's... No, that's they the want to make you depressed and go that direction so you are broke back, broken, as he said, and just submit to it. I'm saying end the mind control. End the, the, the literal hoax we're under, the, the, the spell, the trance we're in. Well, I mean, let, let's think of, in your case, for example, uh, your film, The Obama Deception, I was one of those people that was reluctant to accept it. Then I saw it. At some point, I saw it as the truth. I, I made that, that transition. And, and in, in your, your shows, you're now at a point now where it's no longer so-called conspiracy theories. A lot of what you're talking, the majority of what you're talking about now, which was dismissed even a year or two ago as conspiracy theory, is now becoming the truth. This is not a conspiracy theory. We're anymore. winning. We're winning. Well, it's being recognized as the truth. Okay, so that brings us up to the present, which is now what is the action? And we beat Copenhagen. Action. Hold on. We expose the flu. Most people don't take the shot. It's a huge fraud. Most people know. We expose Copenhagen. We expose... We're winning. I mean, the strategy is working. Well, the truth is being revealed, and now the question is, as far as an action goes, you're saying that a multi... A multifaceted attack is what you're thinking about. Because and we're being hit by a multifaceted attack. Okay, and I'm, I, I, I'm, my thought is that I, I fall into this category, let's call it a one-inch punch or a single thrust, and that's my thought. You know, that, I mean, that's how tell I... Tell us, tell us what the one-inch punch is. Well, the one-inch punch, in other words, you want to drop somebody with one punch. You don't want to be get, getting into a fight with them. Yeah, you want to tear they, their nose off with the first punch. So what is the one-inch punch? Okay, well, after looking at every single company in the United States, and if you think about boycotts as the cheap way to uh, engage activism, the only company that is the most vulnerable to a mass boycott 
which would cause the one-inch punch effect and destroy that company in a matter of three months is Coca-Cola. Now, you may tell me that, well, I've got no beef with Coca-Cola, and I've got no problem with Coca-Cola. But I say to you that the activist community or the, the, or the act the community of listeners to your show, in my show... Would they have, would learn that victory, then they could do it to others. I say go after the airlines, but go ahead. Well, the problem with the airlines is that they're not vulnerable to a boycott. I did a study, and I looked at every single company on the stock exchange, and I looked at it from two ways. A vulnerability to a boycott, which I determined as the stock price over the... Uh, sales. So for every dollar of sales that you withhold from the company, it would have the biggest impact on the price of the stock. So airlines do not have a huge uh, vulnerability to a boycott. Really? They've already lost a lot of money from people not engaged in terrorism because of all the garbage. But, but I mean, okay, you're the expert on this. I'll believe you. So you go okay. after Coca-Cola. How do you go after them? Well, instead of spreading your bet and saying, I'm going to to be a part of this group and that group and, and this boycott and that boycott, every single person who is feeling like the abuse syndrome is kicking them right now and they're being treated like chattel in, in the banker's meat grinder of speculation, if every, and that includes probably 100 million Americans or more, I would think, anybody who's trying to work for a living, uh, if you simply do not drink Coca-Cola for three to six to nine months and you, see, and you take the stock price down to zero, and that's key. You know if you're winning because every single day the Wall Street Journal publishes the stock price. If the stock price is going down, you're winning. And the, the goal is to simply take the price of the stock to zero. Now, of course, people will say, well, what about all the people who work at that company? They're going to lose their job. I have news for you. They're going to lose your job anyway. Or you're going to be disintermediated out of existence anyway. It's, it's beyond trying to finesse the situation now. We have to show them that we can drop them to the, pit, to the mat with a single punch. Coke is the most vulnerable. It's the most vulnerable to a boycott. And I've done the study on this, and this is the company that is the, is the one. Well, you've got to have a reason to boycott them on the surface, and that would be putting aspartame, uh, the uh, feces of bacteria, in the Coke. And for those that don't know, that's how they make aspartame. They feed well, toxic you know, waste to genetically you know, engineered E. coli. They, they feed sure. toxic waste to genetically engineered E. coli, and then they put it in your drinks and food, and it brain damages you. All right, Max, we'll come back and take calls, get into other issues.